This is Andy Matthews with MeepleMountain.com, and we are here at Gen Con 50 with Keith Mateka from Thunderworks Games, who is going to tell us about some of its hot new titles. Take it away, Keith. Hey, so, yeah, hey, guys. A um, couple stuff, uh, things that are coming up. Obviously, uh, we just had a real successful uh, Kickstarter campaign for Absolutely. the for the role-player expansion, Monsters and Minions. That's super exciting. It's it's getting it's kind of done with the pre-production stage and, and entering production. The big pieces on that is in role player you, you build a character. Now with the expansion, you, uh, as you're building a character, you can you can fight minions, and at the very end, everybody gets to fight a big monster. And there's more backstory cards, and there's more uh, alignments to choose from, and more races, and and twice as many classes. It's kind of a bunch of new stuff, as well as kind of more of the existing stuff that's in role player that people love. Well, so. Role player has been an amazing success for you. Can you tell me a little bit about that, real quick? Sure. Uh, role player is a game about building a and d a fantasy style character. So there's a lot of games that are all about dungeon crawling and going on adventures, whereas in role player, just takes the the elements of building the character for your game and turns that into kind of a puzzle multiplayer competitive game. So um, it's, it's really some people you know think building a character for the role playing game is the most fun part of the game, and this kind of Absolutely. takes takes that and creates a game out of that. You know, I guess the analogy that I always make is to me, like uh, you take a game like Dominion is kind of a meta game for a game like Magic: The Gathering, and, and role player is kind of the meta game for playing D and D. It's yeah. the, the game that you play before you play the game. So yeah. it's kind of a unique take on. Um, uh, on the whole genre, it's a really fun dice manipulation game. It's got, you got 73 dice in the bag, plays up to four players. It takes about dice. an hour to play. It's a it's a good time, and um, I've been lucky enough to win uh, a few awards in the last year. Uh, Role player was uh, nominated and won the uh, Dice Tower Award for the best uh, game from a small publisher. So super honored uh, to see that, and it's been doing really well. So. Wow. There's very rarely will a uh, game night go by at Meeple Mountain where a role player does not hit the table. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it's been super popular. Yeah. Well, tell us what else you have. What else you have? So, um, in addition to the expansion of role player, um, I'm pu publishing a game called uh, Dual Powers Revolution 1917 from Brett Myers. It's a 45-minute area control game um, set in Russia in 1917, where one person plays the red side, one person plays the white side. So it's asymmetrical, two players. Um, it's great for like a lunch hour, uh, and it has a bit of a historical element as well. So, um, and Brett is a, a veteran game designer, and it's super tight, uh, fun title. So that'll be coming probably to Kickstarter. I'm, I'm hoping um, in uh, maybe in February. So we're working on art for it. It's, uh, it's, it's the art is being done by the same guy who did uh, Flip Ships from Renegade or um, Capital Lux. So. Yep. Um, it's going to have a real unique, uh, interesting look, and uh, cool. I'm excited about it. Yeah, so. that's awesome. Uh, now, if I remember correctly, you're also doing a project with Eduardo from Pencil First Yeah, Games. so uh, Ed and, and I have become friends over the years, and he had this concept, and he said, hey, I've got this idea, but I want you to design it. I was like, ah, sure, let's do it. So uh, the whole idea, it's another actually two-player asymmetrical game uh, that kind of takes that idea of one player plays as this giant creature, and the other one plays as kind of an uh, army of fantasy characters, and right. it's, it's, it plays on a three by three grid, and then uh, the fantasy characters can jump onto the monster. So then there's a separate board for the monster, and as um, kind of more damage is dealt to different parts of the monster, the monster's um, the guardian or the the, the creature's abilities um, then become disabled. So there's this this interesting uh, kind of in inverse of power. At the beginning of the game, the heroes are really powerful, or the, sorry, the the monster is very powerful, right. but as he, his stuff gets disabled, then the heroes kind of become more powerful. So there's kind of a cross, uh, a cross fade of, of power over the game. But it's, it takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play, and, and there's Sounds a variety great. of different monsters to play as, and then the heroes have a handful of different kings that they can use that have different powers as well. So um, we're in art production on it. Um, and uh, it's, it's going really well. So. And is this going to be a Kickstarter project? Yeah, Ed is going to run the Kickstarter for it uh, early next year, I believe. Um, he's hoping to target it for a Gen Con release of next year. So That's awesome. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, very cool. you have anything else to share with us? Yeah, so I mean, I mentioned Ed. We're doing a couple yeah. additional projects. So I worked on the single player version of uh, Herbaceous for him. And Ed, uh, Steve Finn was the designer. And Beth Sobel obviously uh, did the art. Um, and we're bringing that kind of gang back together to work on a game called uh, Sunset Over Water. And uh, Ed, Ed plans on putting that in Kickstarter in the next couple months as well. So you'll see that soon. That's great. Um, that's a game about um, you're an artist and you travel uh, throughout different landscapes and you take your painting and, and then you're taking those paintings and trading them in for uh, points and you're fulfilling commissions. It's, 
it's a lighter game, similar to Herbaceous, um, but uh, it's it's, uh, it's an interesting one. So oh, and, awesome. and it's a very beautiful game as well. Ed is got to be the hardest working man in, in uh, board gaming. He is a uh, uh, very hard working dude, and it's nice because. Um, Ed has Ed lives in the city that I used to live in, and then also Ed, uh, he's worked in video games for a long time, and, yeah. and I've worked in video games for over 15 years as well. So uh, we often have, we have lots of common touch points and, and similar experiences. So it's a, it's an awesome relationship. All right. Well, thanks for taking time. One yeah. last question. Sure. So your name is a little bit odd. I know. All right. I know. So it's Mateka. It is Mateka. Yeah. But what is the funniest mispronunciation that you've heard of your name? So my name has been, you know, murdered multiple times over my over my life, and and Mateka is the is the way we pronounce it. But you know, you hear anything from Mateka to Mateka to Metajeka or Metajeka, um, and you know, at, at some point you just kind of just like that's the way it is. I'll people pronounce it. So. Um, it, it actually uh, is, a, is a Czech, it has a Czech background. Okay. It, it means Matthews, is what I've been told. But probably Medejeka is probably up there with some nice. of the, the most uh, brutal butcherings of it. It is no, I'm going to mispronounce it anyway, it's no Ignacy right. Shevichek. Right. I'm not probably even, also wrong, but right. that's okay. I'm not even going to try on that one. <laughs> exactly. But. All right. Well, thanks so much for your time, yeah. Keith, and uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Good luck with all of your uh, upcoming projects. Awesome. All right. This is Andy Matthews with MeepleMountain.com at Gen Con 50. For more information about the games that we talked about, check the description below.